everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews and my favorite time of the month in my makes video. Now I wasn't quite as prolific in April as I normally am and the main reason was just because I actually got to start working again. So the company that I was consulting for prior to the pandemic has finally landed on their feet again and they were able to bring me back on as a consultant. So needless to say I have a lot less hours in the day to sew which is a little bit sad. Um, you may notice a sort of shift in my content moving forward just because I had some struggles this month sort of reconciling the fact that once I did have free time I had to choose whether that free time was spent um, filming a video or sewing for myself. And a lot of times I picked filming a video because I feel obligated to provide, you know, those two videos every week. So sewing is my hobby and the fact that I wasn't able to sew as much because I had to film videos made me a little bit sad. So I think moving forward, I need to sort of like reevaluate the, the kind of content that I'm filming and really focus more time on filming what it is that I enjoy making instead of trying to make a separate video just for you guys um, educational reasons. So you know, just, just be aware that moving forward, you know, the content might shift a little bit and it's more going to be focused on, you know, just making the things that I want to make and what makes me happy. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into all of the things that I've made this month. So the first one I want to show you is this gorgeous bra that I made with the Bees on Latte bra tool from Emerald Erin. So I showed this to you in my plans video and the plan that I had for this was to do sort of like a thick banded modified grace bra and I completely abandoned those and just made something completely different and I am in love with the results so I can't really be mad at myself that I decided to throw out my plans and make something different. So this bra is sort of like a uh, inspiration inception because I was inspired by Emerald Erin who was inspired by Twisted Poppy who was inspired by Edge of Beyond. So I took all of the elements of those bras that I liked and then changed a few things as well to make something that I thought was a little bit more wearable for me. So the interior cup of this is made with um, light copper duoplex and this is something that I purchased from Beware and what I've done is the Black Beauty bra uh, cup, this is a two piece cup and the one that I've modified for a plunge bra. So I did bring it down by an inch in the bridge here because I'm using a plunge wire and so that sort of narrows down the front to give you a little bit more cleave-tastic look. Um, and then the reason I did that is most of the other bras were using like a demi or half cup and I just felt like that wasn't something that I was comfortable wearing and I really wanted something that I could sort of slip into my wardrobe not be so fantasy inspired. So that's why I went with a more fuller coverage cup and I'm really happy how it turned out. Uh, so the the power bar along the outside is just a modified power bar from the Black Beauty bra uh, that, that has been modified and added this little extension here. So it's sort of like a harness. And then I used half inch strap elastic and light copper along the front portion here. And then thicker light copper um, strapping to go towards the back. So I think this bra turned out really well. I really like how it looks and I love the color scheme of it. Um, it's obviously different than all the inspiration bras but it's something that, so there is a little bit of uniqueness to it because it's the color that I chose uh, but it, it definitely has that nod to the other inspira inspirations. Now in terms of how it wears, I would say this guy is really, really supportive. Now obviously I don't have a whole lot of top that I'm needing to support, but I can definitely get that feeling that I'm sort of like strapped in and nothing's going anywhere. So sort of like the feeling of wearing a sports bra or something like that. Um, so it, larger busted gals, I would say maybe try out a pattern like this or an alteration like this because I, I definitely think it gives me more support. Uh, I don't get any extra cleavage. I know when Emerald Erin made hers, like she just looked fantastic in it um, on me. I don't have any tissue to really push towards the center, so I don't really get any cleavage, but I, I still think it's a really sexy look and I'm very happy with how it turned out. So that is my Bees and Latte inspired harness bra. So next up, I have a revisit of one of my inspiration bras. Back in November, I made this lovely light pink bra that was supposed to sort of be inspired by Emerald Erin's Lily of the Valley. And while I really love that light pink bra, 
it wasn't exactly close enough to the inspiration for me to feel like I did it justice. And so I spent some more time looking around the internet for the lace and I was able to find the exact same lace that Emerald Erin had used. And so I went ahead and tackled it again this month and I am really happy with the results. So here is the bra first. Um, so I've used the lace here and this is actually the Fenway bra pattern and um, the undercup that I've made out of bra tool is the original three piece Fenway pattern. Now, when it came to the overlay on the lace, instead of making it a three piece cup of lace. So what I did with a pink bra is I did the two lower cut pieces and then one cut piece that arced around the top that had the scalloped edge. So I, I rejiggered it just a little bit so that I could have two um, lace pieces and not three. So it extends, I drafted it so it extends just a little bit further than that cross cup seam so you don't really see it when worn. And all you really see is that one vertical seam when worn. And it looks very similar to Erin's version because in hers, she had done a darted uh, one piece cup. And so she again has that vertical seam running almost to the top of the scallops. Mine just runs all the way through the scallops whereas hers do not. Uh, the center front of mine, I did this really nice bridge detail with keyhole. Again, not exactly like Emerald Aaron's. I think hers was a full band bra, but she did this keyhole design in there. And I just decided it'd be a little bit easier for me to, to make it as a partial band bra. And I get the same exact look, but uh, it worked out better in my head. I could figure out what I was doing a little bit better. And then somebody had mentioned when I made the pink one that I should have continued to lace all the way down the back band. So that is what I've done on this one. I'm hoping you can maybe see that in, in the video. It's not exactly coming up great on camera because it's white on white with white, but it looks really great. Now I have to say that I struggled a little bit with this pattern, even though it's a bob that I've made before. I made all these alterations before. When I went back in and made it, I felt like the bridge was too wide. So I had to unpick this section here and redo the bridge to make it just a little bit narrower. This, this piece that runs the gap in between there, I made it a little bit narrower. And then once I had added my back band on, I felt like the back band was too short. Now, the first time that I had made this bra, I felt like the bra was a little bit too big. And so that's why I had shortened my back band material to compensate for that. But I think I went just a little bit too far. And I think the materials I was using have more um, or less stretch in them so it was too small so then I had to unpick this section and redo my back band as well so it took me a little bit more time because I was unpicking a lot I basically made the bra twice but I'm really really happy with the results I think it fits well on me and I'm excited because I think it looks exactly like the lily of the valley bra I wore it I think I wore it once this month and it was super comfortable. So very, very happy with the results. Now, last time all I made of this bra, but because this bra was so successful, I went ahead and made the entire three piece set just like Emerald Aaron had done. So that is the bra. So next up I did the underwear. And the underwear pattern that I used is Watson from Cloth Habit. And I really, really like how it turned out. So I did the lace overlay on top. I brought the lace up a little bit higher just because I could. Um, and then behind it, I have some micro mesh. I think in her original, she used bra tool in the front, but I just went ahead and used white micro mesh behind everything. And the micro mesh uh, is, was purchased from the TaylorMade shop. Mm, probably a couple months ago, but she's, she definitely still has it now. It's like a, it's a basic color. So white mic micro mesh for the whole body of the underwear, but then that little lace panel sitting in the front. Again, I'm hoping you are able to see it. It's white on white with white. Now I'm understanding why she shot this against a black background. Um, I had originally sewn this lace down along the scalloped edge with some zigzag stitches, but I didn't love how it looked. And because this pattern is drafted with some negative ease, it stretches across the body so even though it looks a little floppy now with the lace coming off once it's on the body everything's sort of lace taut and, and I don't have any problems with this sort of dipping down so I had stitched it into place and I went ahead and removed those stitches just because I thought it looked a little bit nicer to have it free floating with nothing stitched on top and then of course the last portion of the three-piece set is the garter belt so I did self-draft this garter belt I have a video up on my channel right here of the process of, of drafting a garter belt, but not any of the construction of it. 
So this is the garter belt that I made. Again, I've used that white micro mesh throughout all of it. And then I just put a little bit of the scalloped edge of the lace along the waistline. And it worked out really, really well. So I tried to copy exactly what Emerald Erin had done. I covered all of my edges in full of elastic. And then looking at the close-ups of the pictures, it looked like it was just the full of elastic was continued down. So I went down about five inches on there and then uh, permanently attach the garters to the bottom. So this is not an adjustable garter belt, but I can't imagine that I'm gonna be wearing this that often with thigh high stockings. It was really just, uh, can I do this? And so I wanted to make it. So that's the front of the garter belt. And then in the back, it just connects with a uh, two by two by three hook and eye closure. So it makes it really adjustable and easy to take on and off. And because this entire thing is made out of stretchy uh, micro mesh, it's really comfortable to wear. So that is the garter belt for the Lily in the Valley set. Really excited that I was able to recreate this set because it's something that's been sitting in the back of my mind for a while now, and I think I definitely did it justice. I can go ahead and cross that one off of my list. <laughs> so the next up, I have a thong that I made. Uh, I made a thong pattern for myself to go with my New Year's Eve set, and I also made a thong back in February for the Bra Builders kits. And a lot of you guys had expressed interest in seeing a tutorial on self-drafting a thong. So I did go ahead and film that this month. And this is the thong that I made while filming that tutorial. So for this one here, I've just used a uh, a medium weight power net for the entirety of the thong and then bound it in fold over elastic. So that's one of like the simplest ways to do it. Uh, so I just wanted to show like very basic construction in there. So this one is based off of my self-drafted panty block. Uh, so it's using that panty block that we, we developed last year to go, sort of go ahead and change up the style lines on it so you get a thong. Um, so I'm really happy with how this turned out because it's not very often that bottoms fit me. And so I really like being able to modify my block because I know the block fits my crotch length much better than any commercial pattern. Um, and so for me, I get to something that's wearable a lot faster if I start using, if I start with the block that's made to my measurements, if that makes sense. So this is the thong that I made during that tutorial and that tutorial should be out later in May. So keep an eye out for that if you guys are interested. You may not have noticed, but my YouTube channel surpassed 20,000 subscribers this month, and I was really, really excited about it. And so as a treat to myself as a you did it. I went ahead and purchased two bra patterns that I had been eyeing for quite some time. And I was managed to sew up both of those bra patterns this month, which was super amazing. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is the AFI Atelier Exquisite Bra. So one of the reasons why I really, really wanted this pattern is I thought it had a very beautiful style line design. So it is a four piece cup. So there's a, a style line here, 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 yeah, just, just three style lines, but four individual pieces. Um, I had tried to do something similar to this by modifying my Black Beauty bra several months ago. And while I like that adjusted pattern, I think this one is so much better. And so I'm really glad that I went ahead and invested in buying this pattern because it was, it, it, surpassed all of my expectations for the exquisite bra. And I can't wait to make more of these. So of course in this one, I'm using that Nicolette bra kit that I purchased from Beware. So it is a stretchy material and then I've lined it with a non-stretch sheer cup lining. So I had a good enough amount of support. And in this bra, when I was going ahead to fit it, I did something a little bit different. At first I compared my frame to frames that I like using and I, I felt pretty confident that the frame was gonna go ahead and work for me. So what I did is I just sewed up my cut pieces and sheer cup lining and attached a wire into it and held it up to my bust to figure out what I needed to change. And so I think I did two mock-ups that way with just the cup and the wire. And I got something that I thought was pretty close and I went ahead and made this bra and the fit is spot on. So I really like that method for fitting. And so it's something that I am going to be sharing on my channel later on this year, maybe in the next couple months. Cause like I said, I wanna focus on making things that are making me happy right now. But it's something that I'll share down the road uh, just because it's a different method of fitting bras than I typically take. And it's something that got me to a wearable state much, much faster and with a lot less wasted materials. So this is the exquisite bra. Um, 
Let's see what else. I, I did swap out some of the materials from the kit just because of personal preference. So I this I think originally had an ivory uh, power net and hook and eye closure. So I swapped them out for sort of like my nude beige color. And then, like I said, on the inside, uh, sheer cup lining in here. And I think the sheer cup lining was included in the kit, but very, very happy with how this turned out. It's such a lovely shape. I do love this very like exaggerated, curvaceous bottom. I think that's absolutely gorgeous and it does just look really pretty. So <laughs> I think you can tell that I like this pattern and I'll probably be sewing up a lot more of these in the future. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I have to think about the best sort of fabrics to use with this. A lot of people have been using lace and it's absolutely gorgeous. My only concern with using lace is that there's, you know, a very Lots of lace has scallops in it and these three widths of the cups are, are fairly narrow and I'm not the best at pattern matching my scallops so that I get a continuous line. So I don't know if I wanna use lace on this because I think it's a little bit too far of a headache than I wanna to go into, but I do have a ton of bra tool in my stash and so I could definitely see a bra tool bra made up in this pattern that would be gorgeous. So that is the AFI Atelier Exquisite Bra Pattern made up in the Beware Nicolette Bralette Kit. The second pattern that I purchased this month for myself is the Orange Lingerie Lansdowne pattern. I'd been wanting this pattern ever since I saw Angel So's recent set. Uh, she did an art deco version with like this charmeuse lace and black and she used her embroidery machine and it's gorgeous and I love it and it made me wish that I had an embroidery machine, but I went ahead and bought the pattern in any way, even though I won't have the exact bra that she had. So to sew this guy up, I used some of my new um, bra tool that I purchased from the TaylorMade shop. So it's on sale right now if she still has some in stock. I want to say it was like $7.70 a yard, something like that. It's really, really beautiful. It has a lot of like rich, deep colors in it. Uh, and originally I was going to do the entire bra out of this bra tool because I just thought it would look fun, but I started looking on Instagram at other people's makes of this bra and I thought that it looked a lot more effective when you had that contrast color between the upper and lower cup. So I went digging through my stash and found some black lace in there that I hadn't used. So I went ahead and used that black lace along the cup and I really am happy that I did that. So this pattern is a, again, an, a, another plunge style bra. I do find that plunge style wires are a lot more comfortable on me when I'm at my lower sort of weight set because my sternum sticks out right here and uh, wires that come up too high definitely press in and get a little bit uncomfortable. I like having a wide range of wire sizes available in my bras depending on what my body is currently living at um, just because I know it fluctuates a lot. So this one is a plunge style wire. It's also a partial band. So there's just a small connection point here in the bridge there. And then the back bands connect on the side. So I did make a couple of partial band bras this month, which is sort of unique for me. It's not a style I make super often. Um, this bra tool is super, super supportive. I think it worked out really great. And I love, even though there's no actual black in the bra tool itself, I like how the black contrasts with it. I had also been looking at using some sort of like terracotta -y colored elastics with this but of course I didn't have any terracotta lace. So once I had decided on the black lace, I switched everything over to black as well. On the interior of the bra, there's not a whole lot to show. Um, I used black sheer cup lining to line all of my bra tool because I thought it made the colors really pop out. But then I went ahead and used sort of a flesh toned color to back the lace because I really like it when you're using lace if you can that when you're able to see sort of like the texture and detail of the lace itself. So if I had used black behind there, then you wouldn't have been able to see all of that detail. You just would have looked more like solid black. So that's one tip that I use a lot of times is like when I'm using lace, I almost always use my nude color behind the lace so that it looks more ethereal and floating. So that is the Lansdowne bra from Orange Lingerie made using bra tool from TaylorMade Shop. And last up for my bra makes in April, I have my project for Disney Bounding in the Bedroom. So if you're not familiar, it's a new series I started on my channel where I sort of make lingerie inspired by Disney characters and I tackle one character each month. So for the month of April, I worked on Tiana and I made a bra and I made a pair of top pants. So let's take a closer look at it. 
So this is the bra that I made and I'm so happy with the results. Like this is one of my favorite things I've made in a while. And I know I say that a lot, but like when I'm constantly making, I constantly have new favorites. So it's, it's an ever changing thing. And, and hopefully one day I'm gonna get to the point where my entire wardrobe is filled with just my favorites, if that makes sense. So the technique here that I used here was to do an ombre effect of bra tool across the cups. Um, there is a construction video already up on my channel on making this bra so if you want to know more about how I constructed it that's also a good resource for you and I will link that up in the iCards above so it's bra tool in in numerous different colors fading down on the interior cup here and all of that bra tool was purchased from the tailor-made shop and then for the exterior portion of the, the the power bar and the frame and stuff like that I used a silk de peony that I purchased from fabric wholesale direct so this, this silk has a shot silk, so it's like turquoise and gold. So depending on the angle of it, it changes colors. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. All of the elastics and stuff on here, I've dyed myself using the pistachio acid dye from Dharma Trading Company. On the interior of the bra, you can see that I've done a foam cup in there. And I use the foam cup as sort of like the structure to build the different layers of tool on top of. So that's why there's a foam cup. Fit wise, I'll say that this bra is a little bit shallow. I think that the layers of bra tool might be a little bit limiting and, and not allowing for enough um, swell in the bust here. So if I was to do this technique again, that's something that I need to keep in mind and not, not sort of compress down the bust area. But even though it's a little shallow, I still really, really like it. Um, and I'll definitely be wearing it, even though I never intended my Disney bounding in the bedroom to be things that got actual physical wear. I was focusing more on the fantasy aspect. I think this is one that I can slip into my everyday wardrobe, even though it's quite fancy with it's all of its silk and tool and stuff like that. So that is the bra that I made for Tiana. And then for the bottoms, I made a pair of self-drafted tap pants. So this is utilizing some silk charmeuse that I ordered from Dharma Trading Company. And then I drafted this pattern myself because I wanted something that had almost a full circle skirt of flounce and lovely loveliness on there with a more fitted yoke on the top. Um, so the silk charmeuse was a little bit tricky to work with. I've never worked with this type of fabric before. And so there was a pretty steep learning curve working with it. Um, it feels like absolutely air like there's nothing there's no weight to it or anything like that and it moves in such a gorgeous watery effect so that's really nice um in retrospect there are a few things about these tap pants that i would change and i might go ahead and change them but just because i have enough of this fabric left over one thing i really think i should do is cut this yoke piece out on the bias so i had originally cut it with a grain line going horizontally like that and you know, the silk being so drapey as it is, what I end up getting is horizontal lines as well. So I might go in and cut off this, the, the yoke section of the pants and put in a new yoke and a new waistband. And I'll have something that's a little bit more wearable. I do like wearing tap pants underneath dresses because I find it's really, really comfortable to wear and they have like that nice floaty appearance. And these are no exception because that silk against the skin, again, feels absolutely luxurious. So that is my project for the Tiana Disney bounding in the bedroom. The last thing that I made this month was a garment and it is a pair of Morgan jeans using the Morgan jeans pattern from Closet Core Patterns. So this is actually a kit that I got from Minerva.com. Um, so Minerva started doing kits recently where they have the kit contains the pattern, the fabrics, all the hardware, the thread, the needles, the interfacing, everything. And so that was a lot of fun because it meant that I didn't have to do a whole lot of digging around to find anything. Everything was right there and it all matched and coordinated and was really, really great. So, um, the Morgan jeans pattern is one that I didn't have. I had the ginger jeans and I've sewn a couple, like five or six pairs of ginger jeans in my time. And, um, because I've always been the person that wears skinny jeans, at least for the last eight or nine years, I haven't worn anything but skinny jeans. But you know, I've, 
I've been reading the news and I see that it's no longer hip to wear skinny jeans. And even, even though that I am a millennial, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna branch out a little bit. I'm gonna try a boyfriend cut style instead. So the Morgan jeans is a boyfriend style jean. So this one is still quite fitted through the hip, waist and thigh. And then it doesn't really like release out until below the knee. Now it does use a non-stretch denim, so a rigid denim. So I suspect that if you wear them for several days or over a lot of hours, um, this denim is going to sort of like stretch out and, and relax a little bit. And so you get a little bit baggier of appearance, but certainly when I first made them, they were pretty tight around this section here. So this is an eight ounce washed denim and it's a little bit lightweight, but it meant that I didn't have to worry too much about sewing over things with machine. It does have this button fry, fly closure. I ended up adding a, a third, uh, another extra button in here. I think the original pattern only has three buttons up the closure and I added four just because I felt like I needed one at the top. There was too big of a gap between the waistband and the first button. So that's why that button is a little bit off center, um, but you don't really see it because of the way that the, in, concealed flap is constructed. Uh, and the other thing that I was really happy with these jeans is just the pocket. So I've never done a fancy pocket. I decided that this was the time I'm gonna do a fancy pocket. Um, the designer from Closet Core Patterns does have a, have a PDF file that you can get for free about fancy what is it called? Fancy booty pocket, something like that. There's 33 different ideas. And so I picked up this idea from that PDF file and transferred it over to the pocket and really happy how it turned out because I think it makes it look really professional. Um, this is also the first time I've ever made jeans with a really high contrast top stitching thread. So I went really, really slowly. And I think the secret to top stitching jeans is to have two machines. <laughs> so the last time I've been making machine, uh, the last time I made jeans. I only had one machine and I recently picked up a backup machine of my FAF Passport 3.0. And so I had set the Passport up as my top stitching machine and I used the Bernina as like the sewing machine. So it was really a lot easier because then I could go switch back and forth between machines instead of having to rethread and re-needle in between each uh, individual step. So having two machines while you're making jeans is a huge game changer. Uh, on the interior, I went ahead and used uh, the old gold sort of serging thread as well, just because I wanted to sort of tie in that top stitching from the outside. And I thought it made it look very denim -y to me. So very happy with these jeans. And I can see myself making a couple more. So I don't have a whole lot of non-stretch denim or any non-stretch denim in my stash, but I'd be interested in sort of making this up in a stretch denim just to see if that helps the comfortability when you first put it on. I do have some cone mill S jean denim and I have a couple of other like bottom weight stretch denims that I might wanna try out with this pattern. I hope everybody has enjoyed a look at what I've been up to in the month of April. Be sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And let me know down in the comment section what your favorite make was and why. And I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.